Hello and welcome to this lecture. Today we are going to discuss another topic and the name of the topic is chronic bronchitis. So I'm going to present the case of a 65 years old man with a 40 years history of tobacco use and a chronic productive cough for several years developed most severe dyspnea and fever. He has an enlarged chest diameter and some mild blueness to the lips. The increased mucus secretion of the airways and inflammation leads to chronic small airways obstruction. Chronic bronchitis is diagnosed after pulmonary function test, chest x-ray and CT scan. So what will be the learning objectives? We will define and compare chronic bronchitis with emphysema, understand the causes of chronic bronchitis, discuss the pathogenesis of chronic bronchitis and recall the morphological and clinical features of chronic bronchitis. So the first thing is that chronic bronchitis is actually a persistent productive cough. So this is the first main characteristic when we compare uh, with chronic bronchitis with emphysema. In this case, the productive cough will be produced and executive and at least consecutive three months in at least two consecutive years. So this is a key point to diagnose the patient that having consecutive productive cough uh, for at least three months and at least two times in uh, and at least two consecutive years. So you can see on the right side and left side uh, on the left side this is a healthy uh, uh, airway airway path air pathway and on the right side is inflammation and excess mucus. So the inflammation and excess mucus uh, is the key characteristic in chronic bronchitis. What are the etiologies? Smoking cigarette is a more common uh, reasons than urban dwellers, uh, people that are uh, living in the urban areas. Inflamed bronchitis, they will be infection, smoking, sometimes with the paint or with a chemical or pollutants or dust as the key characteristic. So if you take a look of this case study, we mentioned that 40 years history of tobacco. So tobacco is the risk factor for the disease chronic bronchitis then chronic productive cough. So these two characteristics will give you an idea that a patient is having chronic bronchitis then uh, the clinical symptoms dimension is dyspnea and fever. So let's see in detail what are the further things. What is the pathogenesis? The key characteristic, the number one is the hyper secretion of the mucus. That is number one. Then uh, the etiology, as we know that the cigarette smoking and air pollutants such as sulfur dioxide or nitrogen uh, can potentiate the bronchitis. Then environmental irritants such as, for example, if somebody is done the paint at their home and just you want to shift to a new home, so the smell or the fragrance of that paint uh, will result in bronchitis. Then increase sec mucin secreting globulets. Uh, that's important because mucin secreting globulets are responsible for secretion of the mucus in the epithelial surface of the small bronchi and bronchioles. So again, the airway pathways consist of uh, mucin secreting goblets that will produce more mucus so that is one of the key pathogenesis of the disease then obviously there will be the marked inflammation and when we talk about inflammation we have inflammatory mediators such as macrophage neutrophils and lymphocytes will be there and with the, uh, not only we have these but we also have the synthesis of cytokinins intraleukotriene 13 from the T cells and from innate lymphoid cells. So these are the key uh, pathogenesis for that disease. What will be the morphology? The morphology of the disease is consists of mucosal line of the airways usually hyperemic and swollen by edema fluid. So they will be the presence of edematic fluid. And it is covered by the layer of mucinous and mucoprulent secretions. Mucoprulent secretions. Then we have enlargement of the mucus secreting gland as we already discussed pathogenesis and we already know that this, there will be more mucus secretion, more enlargement of the glands, more production of the mucus, more mucoprulent secretion. So that is a key characteristic we found. 
so how can we see that uh, in that case this is a picture of chronic bronchitis the lumen of the bronchus is above so this section you know you can see the upper part that this section that i have highlighted this is the lumen and note that there is marked thickness of the mucous gland uh, which we dimensioned that they will be the glands inside uh, the tissue they will be uh, hyper they will be the hypertrophy of the mucous gland and squamous metaplasia of the lung epithelium to understand this slide we need to take a normal histological structure of uh, the cells that are present uh and this is a normal histological structure that this structure is the lumen the upper layer is the pseudo stratified ciliated epithelium this section is the lamina propria then this below the lamina propria this section is belong to the smooth muscles and beneath the smooth muscles these are the mucous glands so the what the what are the main characteristic in in that that the mucous secretions mucous gland become enlarged we can say the enlargement of the mucous glands so what we see this picture now you can take a look so if you find uh, these structures the round structures that we found so these are the glands and actually these glands are actually enlarged and uh, swollen why because of the mucus uh, secretion that is found and then we mentioned that uh, squamous metaplasia of the lung epithelium so we know that the lung epithelium surface like uh, pseudo stratified ciliated epithelium so that uh, pseudo stratified CD, C, C, so that so, so pseudo stratified ciliated epithelium actually uh, have changed to squamous metaplasia so they will be the change of the uh, uh, lung epithelium and if you take this this is example of i just put some uh, pictures that respiratory epithelium now how normally respiratory epithelium look like and if uh, the hyperplasia occur then the shape of the structure uh, uh, changes in squamous metaplasia they further uh, differentiate or change into uh, a different type of cells then if they if there is high grade dysplasia what happen then we have cis and then so squamous cell carcinoma so you can see that uh, that chronic bronchitis actually if chronic bronchitis proceed uh, or worse for longer duration it can change to squamous cell carcinoma so that is actually i want to explain that uh, if you take a look of these six pictures they are showing you some transition from normal respiratory epithelium normal respiratory epithelium to basal cell hyperplasia then transformation into squamous metaplasia then high grade dysplasia and then uh, we will see that uh, cis what cis stand for cis stand for carcinoma in situ so that transformations occur and i give you that a uh, simple picture that how that transformation occur you can see that in the basement membrane on the above Uh, pseudo stratified or columnar epithelium they are look like column shaped structure and when they transform into squamous metaplasia they become differentiated they uh, they, they then lost their columnar shape structure and they become irregular uh, shape uh, that is showing you that squamous metaplasia and this is another picture in the down side that these are arranged in the column column shape structure Uh, and then they change from columnar uh, pseudo stratified columnar epithelium to squamous metaplasia where they lost the cilia and they also lost the column shape structure and then uh, they develop squamous metaplasia we will discuss in detail uh, in later on in the carcinoma because squamous metaplasia change to dysplasia and dysplasia change to carcinoma in situ and then uh, high grade uh, squamous cell carcinoma will be occur clinical features will be the production of cough sputum and persist 
indefinitely without ventilatory dysfunction. Usually it is more profound with the production of sputum. Then uh, it could result in chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder and marked with hypercapnia, hypoxemia and cyanosis. So thank you so much for today's lecture. Hope to see you again.